Do you think LeBron is, uh, does he go, does he opt out and go back to Cleveland another time? Uh, does he stay with the Lakers and hire, um, hire his podcaster coach <laughs> and JJ Reddick? Cause you know, this podcasting thing, Vinny, I don't know, man, you're doing great. You're doing great in this space. Keep it up. And maybe there's a coaching gig there for you as well. Um, <laughs> what, what do you think? What do you think? Uh, what do you think LeBron will do with his uh, next step? I mean, we've always known that everything LeBron does is strategic, right? So him showing up in Cleveland last night on national television, knowing that the video is going to be played over the jumbotron, he's going to get the standing ovation, he's going to get the love and all of that type of stuff. But remember, I told you about the Pistons and Monty Williams. Remember I told you? Remember, I, I think I told you this. I said, look, man, you ask a woman on a date three times, she say no. You don't keep asking, you move on. The same mm. thing. You don't let somebody leave you twice, let alone three times. Okay, I'm not letting nobody leave. I'm not letting nobody. You got you got one time to leave me. Whether it's my mm. fault or not, you got one time to leave me. Ain't gonna be no please, baby, please, baby, please. Ain't gonna be none of that. Okay, none of that. Now, you ain't ever heard a song. That, ain't too proud to beg. You ever heard that song? That's not in your playlist. I, that definitely ain't in my playlist. Mm -mm. Begging, begging ain't, <laughs> begging ain't, ain't over here. Look, I ain't never made. Here's the thing: I've never made such a critical error in any situations where I gotta beg for forgiveness. So if somebody leave me, they leave me because they choose to. Go. Mm -mm. That ain't. Is, is that pride? Is that what that is? Yeah. It, it might be pride. Okay. It might be pride. So be yeah. It. So be. Hey, look, I, I'm I'm learning from a married man here. I'm just sit. The love doctor is sitting on the couch and learning from a man. So I'm just, you know, I get it. I'm I'm learning. I appreciate it's, the. It's what you said. Listen, listen, Vinny. Vinny, you already you you said the answer earlier. You just didn't know you had the answer. You thought you were talking about basketball, but you were talking about love earlier when you said, look, in the regular season. Say, you know, things are nice and pretty in the regular season, but there are times when it's rough. You just gotta, you gotta figure it out. And if that means begging once, <laughs> twice, four times, if that's what it takes, that's what a brother does. Let me tell you, that's what you gotta do. Just type. Almost at 17 years in July. I'm just, I'm just, I'm just trying to tell you. 17. Congra years. Look, hey, congratulations. I'm just, I've never been in such a position before. You know what I mean? I'm just saying, if I've done, if I've done something, I did it. I wanted to do it. I, I may apologize for it. I'm moving on. We moving on. Whatever it is, like, not doing the whole begging thing. Now, back to LeBron. I think to LeBron's, me. I think LeBron's problem is, if there is a problem. He has so many different objectives at this stage of his career, right? He wants to, he's in this never ending chase of being recognized as better than Michael Jordan. And I don't think anybody's going to change their mind because he accumulates a few more stats at age 40 and 41, right? Put that to the side. He wants to compete for championships. He also wants to get paid the maximum amount of money, which those two things I'm not sure go hand in hand. The older you get, the bigger your max is, which means the greater percentage of the salary cap that you take up, which means the less of an opportunity your franchise has to acquire players who can help you in the quest to win a championship. He also wants to dominate Hollywood. He also wants to get into that space, which is why he's in L.A. He wants to play with his son. All of those things, that's like gumbo, like all those things don't work in concert. So you have to ask him what matters the most to you mm. at this stage of your career. And given whatever day it is, it could be playing with Bronny. It could be winning another championship. It could be passing Michael Jordan. You don't know. And that's the problem. You don't know. Don't know. And, and could coach JJ Reddick figure it out? A, give I, I give LeBron another rookie coach. Give LeBron yeah, another, another rookie coach that he has. Oof. 
he has a great relationship with, right? Eat him up. Right? He has a great relationship with J.J. Redick. So you know what that means? Those other 10 players, 11 players in the locker room, they're going to be looking real funny in the light. They're going to be asking who coaching this team. Is it you, coach? Or is it you, LeBron? They already know. They Look, they already know. Hey, who was coaching the team last? Did they have to ask who was coaching the team last year? Or the year they before? They did have to ask who was coaching the team last year. They did. That was the problem. Like, LeBron, LeBron's the coach. LeBron's been the coach. LeBron's the coach. He just, he doesn't have the title. He doesn't have the title, but he's got the position. He's always been, he's been that guy for a long time. It, no, no, no disrespect to you, Frank Vogel. You got your, you know, championship uh, with the Lakers. But LeBron let you. Le LeBron let you have it. I mean, come on, man. <laughs> Look at all these. Hey, LeBron didn't, he didn't coach well in 2003. He was, he was under 500. That's the only time LeBron's been, oh, oh. He didn't coach well in 18, 19. That was his first year. He was hurt though. Didn't he miss all those games at the end? Yeah. I mean, but okay, yeah. but here, but you look at those names. Right? Do any of those names jump out to you as being exceptional coaches? Like David Blatt, David Blatt damn near called a timeout that he didn't have in the playoff game. I was there. I was, I saw it. He he pulled a Chris Webber until Tyron Lu pulled him back and said, hey man, we ain't got no timeouts. So I love those names. Paul Silas, who was already older, God bless, you know, God bless his soul. Paul Silas, one of the toughest men you ever come across. Yeah, that's but right. I don't look at that. I don't look at those names, Luke Walton and Frank Vogel, who just got fired in Phoenix after one Again. year. I don't look at those gig, names though. and I'm like, look, if LeBron, if LeBron fired them, right? If LeBron got somebody fired, I'm not saying he did get them fired, but I'm not saying, I'm not also not saying that it was the wrong choice. You know what I mean? Okay. Like the two coaches he, the two best coaches he had were probably the two best coaches in basketball, Tyron Lou and Eric Spoelstra, and he won championships okay. with him. Well, what he needs to do, if that's the trend, first of all, they need more players because they don't have a championship roster. Sorry, they don't. Agree. Agree. Um, but if they bring in some championship players and hey, general manager James. Why not find the brightest, the best coach? Like Coach Bud, who just got a job with the Suns. Hey, Mike Budenholzer, he'd be a nice coach. He'd be a nice coach for the Lakers. He, for like, who? like, that's it. What? You don't like him? For who? What's the difference between Mike Budenholzer and Frank Vogel? Winning. Winning. Frank Vogel won a championship. Oh, okay. 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 He won a championship oh. too. Uh, Mike Boone, Mike Boonholzer won about 70% of his games in Milwaukee right. and got <clears> fired. <throat> right. Because you want to know why? Game. You want to know why? Because I've seen a Mike Boonholzer team take a 2-0 lead in the Eastern Conference Finals against a Kawhi Leonard Toronto Raptors where Kawhi was on one damn leg and he lost the next four. I saw him go into the bubble, the same bubble that Frank Vogel's Lakers won a championship in. I saw him go into the bubble. Oh, oh man, what happened? They lost in the second round to the Miami Heat. I saw, also saw Mike Budenholzer team last year in the first round of the playoffs, losing five games to an eighth seed, Jimmy Butler in the Miami Heat. I also saw Mike Budenholzer in the second round of the playoffs with Giannis lose to the Boston Celtics as defending in champions so yes mixed around that one achievement that one shining achievement where you beat five foot 11 trey young in the eastern conference finals <laughs> right on your way on your way there right no seriously seriously right. if not for kyrie irving and his ankle if not for james harden and his hamstring that walkie bucks team would have got blown out in the second round to the brooklyn nets bring up he'd have been fired too. bring up the, and the foot to bring up the shoe, shoe size. Shoe no, size. hey, look, look, look. Remember, look, man. Nally's gonna come down from the rafters talking about she don't want to hear about no shoe size. We better and watch. And I'm it, with her. All right. I'm on her all side. Right? I don't want to hear it. about his shoe size. But, no, I, but here's, but here's my larger point. My larger point is, his team's largely underachieved. And I look at Frank Vogel up until this season. Up until this season, I felt like Frank Vogel's teams, especially in Indiana, they largely overachieved.
Hey, thank you for watching Brother From Another. If you haven't hit that subscribe button, go ahead and do that now. Don't forget you can catch us three to four weekdays on PeacockTV.com and on Sirius XM Channel 85.